I claim not the creation of Gilinor. I claim its rightful ownership, for none other dwelled here when first I arrived. And thus this world was given a name, Gilinor. From the humble beginnings of baking a cake to the legendary feats of combat with ancient dragons, Gilinor is brimming with mystery and adventure. And this library is filled with the echoes of those tales just begging to be told once more. So embark on this odyssey with me through the legends of Gilinor. Our story begins roughly 8,000 years ago when a wandering god stumbled upon a desolate but promising rock. This god's name was Guthix, and he formed this realm into the world that we now call Gilinor. Throughout the First Age, Guthix shaped the world and brought races from other realms through the World Gate. He then personally invited the crystalline goddess Sarenth, the divine aspect of light, and with her, the elves, describing Gilinor as perfect and filled with power. Saren had extended the elves' lifespan by millennia with her essence through the Song of Creation, though causing them to be bound to her forever, dying in immense pain if they were away from her for too long. And so she took Guthix up on his offer to come to Gilinor, in hopes that this power might dispel the curse, eventually settling in the lands of Tyrannin and creating the massive crystal city of Priftinus to remind them of their old home. Throughout the millennia, Guthix continues to shape Gilinor and originating new creatures. By the Second Age, Guthix had entered a deep slumber, sealing the World Gate, and with his absence, a slew of new gods began to set foot onto Gilinor. Ceridomen, the god of order and wisdom, arrives on Entrana, bringing with him the Icene and the Centaurs, and conquering much of the land known today as Mortania establishing the Holy Kingdom of Hallowvale. Zaros, the divine aspect of darkness, arrives with his demonic and vampiric followers, establishing a vast empire with its capital of Sentenston, widely regarded as the most advanced settlement of its time. Armadil, the god of justice and law, brings with him an army of aviancies ruling the skies and parts of Kandarin. Tumakin and Elidinus, the menophyte gods of the sun and fertility, fall in love by the river Elid, giving birth to the demigods Ichthorin and Amaskit. Tumakin also creates the deities Atmukin, Krondis, Het, and Scabarus. This pantheon of menophyte deities together rule over the Caridian lands. All of these new gods were rapidly gaining followers and claiming territory, and as such, wars broke out. The Great Caridian Zerosian War was one such conflict sparked by the fears of the Zerosian Empire expanding into the Caridian territory. Because of this, Ichthron sought powerful allies and turned to the Majorat on the plain of Freneske, the home of Zaros, convincing them to join him in his fight against the divine aspect of darkness. With the Majorat at his side, Ichthron pushed back the Zerosian forces gradually. However, a Zerosian Majorat by the name of Slisk convinced his brethren to betray Ichlorin and side with Saros. With this betrayal, the Zerosian forces grew far stronger. The situation became dire. In a last ditch effort, Tumakin, the Menophyte god of sunlight, sacrificed himself in a blaze of fire, resulting in the destruction of both armies and turning the once lush lands of Caridian into a desert thus ending the war. Elsewhere, in the realm of Eubiasc, Bandos, the god of war, sets his sights on Gilinor, 
bringing with him goblins, ogres, and other various creatures of war to begin his siege on the lands. In the midst of war's chaos, the Staff of Armadill emerges, an elder artifact bearing its wielder's namesake. Long believed lost to the annals of time, it stands as one of the most formidable relics ever to grace the realm, now found once more. This powerful god weapon fell into the hands of the highest ranking Majorat general by the name of Zamorak, who was planning a rebellion against his master, Zaros. With this artifact in hand, Zamorak was able to overthrow Zaros and ascend into godhood and become the divine aspect of fire and destruction. Following his old master's defeat marks the end of the Second Age and ushers in the God Wars. Zamorak's ascension into godhood marked the beginning of tumultuous times. The Zerosian Empire faced a concerted effort for extermination by a coalition of Ceridomists and Zamorakians, ending with the total eradication of any mention of Zaros and the imprisonment of a Zerosian priest by the name of Azanadra. In response to this chaos, various factions sought refuge and protection from the escalating conflicts. The gnomes and dwarves established subterranean cities such as Keldegrim, while the elves retreated into the safety of Priftinus, fortifying their defenses under the protection of their goddess Saren. Similarly, the Dorgishan tribe rebelled against Bandos and chose concealment to evade further conflict. In the midst of this turmoil, the once holy Ceridomus kingdom of Hallowvale fell under the dominion of the vampiric Lord Draken, a devout servant of Zamorak, and thus from the ashes of conquest emerged the grim domain of Mauritania. Simultaneously, the ancient Caridian cities of Uzer and Olek succumbed to the destruction at the hands of demon-led forces, leaving barren wastelands in their wake. As these conflicts continuously ravaged the mainland, refugees headed for the sea in search of sanctuary culminating in the establishment of Great Karend. The God Wars roiled throughout the age for over 4,000 years until Zamorak used the Stone of Jass, a mysterious and powerful Elder Relic, laying waste to the entire northern region of the Foreign Three, creating the lands we now know as the Wilderness. The aftermath of the God Wars witnessed the extinction of numerous species and the awakening of Guthix, with loyal followers by his side Guthix intervened bringing an end to the conflict and freezing the combatants forever in time. Banishing the most powerful gods, Guthix established the Edicts. These unbreakable decrees were set in place to maintain balance between the divine factions. Yet even amidst victory, sorrow lingered. Saren, fearing the curse would kill the elves if she left, was unwilling to depart after the establishment of these Edicts. So she shattered herself into countless crystal fragments all across Tyrannin to ensure they could survive without her full presence. Guthix, burdened by devastation wrought by the wars, retreated once more into slumber beneath the surface of Gilinor, his legacy marked by his enduring tears, signifying the end of the Third Age. The Fourth Age, also known as the Age of Mortals, was when the survivors of the God Wars began to rebuild and flourish amongst the world. Civilizations and races all over Gilinar began to unfold, each with its own trials and triumphs shaping the world in their image without the divine beings ruling over them. Humanity, once scattered in barbaric tribes, began to coalesce into permanent settlements and mighty cities. Meanwhile, the gnomes emerged from hiding after the God Wars, only to face threats from the remaining barbaric human tribes. The planting of the Grand Tree marked a resurgence of gnome civilization and the dawn of their technological advancement. However, the goblins, left leaderless after Bandos' banishment, plunged into chaos. Internal strife and conflicts with other races threatened their very existence, but a promising vision of a chosen commander halted their descent into oblivion, leading to the construction of a temple and the formulation of the goblin legends and commandments. The dwarves, thriving beneath the surface in their great city of Keldegrim, experienced many technological advancements under the consortium's leadership. However, their interactions with the surface world would remain limited. Expanding beyond Tyrannin, the elves ruled significant territories in modern-day Kandoran during this time. However, their influence extended far beyond just their forested realms. 
it had missed the rise of civilizations, darkness loomed in the land of Mortania. Under Lord Draken's tyrannical rule, vampires enslaved the land, imposing blood tithes on its helpless inhabitants. Throughout this age, key events began to unfold, shaping the destiny of Gilinor. From the establishment of non-aggression pacts between races to the rediscovery of ancient powers like runecrafting, each event left its mark on the world. As the Fourth Age drew to a close, the stage was set for further transformation as these mighty civilizations continued to grow and flourish. And that brings us to our current age, where a tapestry of new stories begin to unfold. So, what legend would you like to hear next? <laughs>